Hawks Talons. We'll be right back. This is the Eric Underwood pregame show brought to you by Papa's Campers and Cars, located in Picayune, Mississippi. You can say goodbye to the guesswork. We make it easy as one, two, three. When you come by Papa's Camper City for trailer or RV. Selling RVs till the cows come home. Hey, neighbors, check out this new 2023 Coachman Freelander Class C. This 23-footer has a full wall slide and is on a Ford chassis. MSRP 126-165. It's been reduced to only $79,987. do not go and pay more for a new 2022 model than you can get a new 2023 for. Check out Pawpaw's entire inventory at rvbestprice.com. Selling RVs till the cows come home. Great service, great price, now in the nice. You're gonna love the way we deal. Our pals, Camper City, and pick a Yoon. Yeah, boy. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You're gonna love the way we deal. Community College has been providing a quality education to the people of South Mississippi and beyond for the past 110 years. If you or a family member is an alumnus of this great institution, we invite you to support future PRCC students through the PRCC Foundation Scholarship Program. Honor or memorialize a loved one or identify your support for the college by creating a scholarship through the PRCC Foundation with your tax-deductible financial gift. Call Delana Harris with the PRCC Foundation Office at 601 403 1191 and make a financial investment in a young person's future at Pearl River Community College. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here on WRJW. Where you can uh, listen on the WRJW app um, or go on WRJW.com, click on sports, and uh, click on the Hancock St. Martin game. Uh, we'll be live all game as we are every Friday. Um, if you're not following me yet, you, you need to start following me. I, I put some good information out there on the uh, old Twitter slash or X, you should say. And uh, give me a follow on Twitter. It's at Hawks WRJW Radio. So follow me on Twitter. Again, that is at Hawks WRJW Radio. So, that was a great performance right there by the the Hancock High uh, Talons dance team under the new direction of uh, Coach Taylor Niekes. And she got those girls looking pretty good, Dre. Uh, A little bit different style of dancing than uh, we've seen in the past. And, you know, they did a great job. Uh, out there. We got about 10 minutes, 56 seconds until kickoff here at Brett Farm Field in Kill, Mississippi. Um, one thing we haven't talked about, Dre, um, I guess i kind of been trying to shy away from it, but, uh, you know, our good buddy Double D passed away in the offseason, uh, the PA announcer for the Hawks, um, the one that is the famous, it's Friday night here in Kill, Mississippi. Are you ready for some Hawks football? Um, he's no longer with us um, physically, but I feel his presence here today. And uh, I heard that uh, we're still going to be able to hear his voice. Uh, they had a recording of his voice, um, and they'll they'll play that uh, that that same saying, Dre. Right? And uh, I'm looking forward to you because look, looking forward to it because when Double D would would get the the crowd pumped with that, it's Friday night here in Kill, Mississippi. It would just erupt the, the, the crowd, and it, it would literally give you chill bumps. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing that. It's, it's not going to be the same as him doing it in person, but just hearing his voice again and him uh, saying that, I'm sure it's going to get this crowd going. Uh, Dre, you got anything uh, you want to talk about uh, um, before kickoff? Uh, we got a few minutes here. What, what we got? Um, yeah, some uh, games that are going to be playing around – Hancock's district this evening. You have West Harrison. They're going to be playing East Marion. And you have Bay High playing Long Beach. The 1-1, one one, Picky and Maroon Tide playing the Iverville Warriors. Gauche is going to be playing Pascagoula. And you have George County playing Biloxi. And you mentioned the 1-1, one one, Picky and uh, 
controversial game over there in Picayune last week against Catholic BR. And uh, if you haven't seen it, I'm sure you have uh, the, the photos of, of the, the touchdown that shouldn't have been the touchdown and the two-point conversion that shouldn't have been the two-point conversion. And I'll say it here just like I said it um, on Twitter. I mean, X. It's gonna, I'm going to say Twitter. It's, it's Twitter. Twitter's right? Twitter. It's Twitter. Right? Yeah. Uh, but I'm a Hawks fan, and I'm, you know, hate to see that those guys lost that way. Uh, let's just say uh, they should have won that game. I definitely agree. It looked like you know to me because I seen the I seen the video flowing all through Instagram Martin, and Twitter that uh, the, the, the ball carrier Army, for Catholic Army, BR he looked a good oh, one or two yards oh, short of the touchdown on the, the two point conversion that uh gave them the win over Picayune and into their twenty seven game winning streak. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was, his knee was down a good <laughs> yard of you know, but when, it, when things are, uh, you don't have the uh, the luxury of replay. It's not even a thing for high school. Uh, sports. Um, the Hancock High School um, General PC Hawks. So Italian when things are moving in fast motion like that, and it's like a bang bang type play, uh, and Sergeant you, you go with what George your gut Piazza. tells you, and the, the, the line judge or whatnot, whoever we called the ball, the the ball being across the line. Um, you know, they called it how they they saw it. So. Uh, unfortunately, it was a, a loss, and uh, now uh, instead of a 28-game win streak, uh, they're using a one-game losing streak, and I'm sure they will bounce back tonight versus uh, the Iberville. Thank you for bringing us all here and allowing us to gather here and have fun. This is the Eric Underwood pregame show brought to you by Papa's Campus and Cars, and we'll be right back after these messages. Lord, I pray for a safe game here in the safe You can say goodbye to the guesswork. We make it easy as one, two, three. When you come by Papa's Camp or City for a trailer or RV. Hey, people, we're selling RVs till the cows come home this month at Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune. Look at this new 2023 Impression 5th Wheel 240RE by Forest River. This 5th Wheel is a 24-footer with a rear entertainment floor plan with a fireplace and outside kitchen. Don't pay more for a new 2022 model than you can get a new 2023 for. Selling RVs till the cows come home all month long in Picayune. Paul cameras and cars, that's all you need to know. Great service, great price now, isn't that nice? You're gonna love the way we deal. Papa's Camper City and pick a unit. Yeah, boy. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You're gonna love the way we deal. Hi Wildcats, I'm Carrie E. And I'm McKenzie. Are you ready to roar with the best here at Pearl River? We're inviting you to join our growing Wildcat family. Pearl River continues to make headlines as the fastest growing community college in the state. All while putting our students first by not increasing tuition and developing more opportunities for successful careers. Come be a part of history by joining our Wildcat family where we show out our main character energy. Just visit prcc.edu and roar, roar with, with the best. Wow. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here in Kill, Mississippi at Brett Far Field. And you're listening to the Eric Underwood pregame show brought to you by Pawpaw's Campus and Cars, located in Picayune, Mississippi. Great place to get a camper or a car. I uh, want to say that's where I got my Our first little, uh, it was a used car, but uh, that's where we got it from, was uh, Pawpaw's right there in Picayune. Uh, go check them out. Uh, great place to do, uh, do business with. Dre just noticed something. Hancock coming out in new unis, looking more kind of like the old school type Brett Favre when Brett Favre was here. Type uniforms. I uh, got the white stripes across the uh, shoulder pads, gray pants, and uh, navy blue helmets. Looking pretty sharp. Captains are going to be. Looks like all the seniors. Zach Galong, Ty Dito. Dylan Moran, Christoph Gagne, uh, Hopgood, Jeffrey Hopgood, Neil Acker, and That's Bryce Ladner. Yeah. Captains for the St. Martin Yellow Jackets, who will be in white tops, blue pants, and a yellow lid, is Tykevian Wells, 
Caleb Estrada, um, Bradley Moran, and looks like Caden Walker. The three actual captains that are at midfield would be Ty Dito, Bryce Ladner, and Jeffrey Hopgood. So, um, while they do the coin toss with three minutes and about 45 seconds here, um, this is the Eric Underwood pregame show brought to you by Pawpaw's Campus and Cars, located in Picayune, Mississippi, and we'll be right back after these messages. You can say goodbye to the guesswork. We make it easy as one, two, three. When you come by Papa's Camp for City for trailer or RV. Selling RVs till the cows come home. Hey, friends, check out this new 2023 Rockwood Mini Light 2204S. This unit has a kitchen pantry, U shaped dinette, and a king bed that can be converted into two beds. MSRP 47268 reduced to only 28987. Paul Boss Campers and Picayune, your South Mississippi Rockwood dealer. Give us a call toll free 800 728 2267. Selling RVs till the cows come home. Great service, great price, now isn't that nice? You're gonna love the way we deal. Pop House Camper City and Pick a Yoon. Yeah, boy. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You're gonna love the way we deal. Welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing the game live here in Kill, Mississippi at Brett Favre Field. Uh, coin toss was won by the Hawks. Uh, Hawks defer to the second half. Like to see that. And we'll be uh, kicking off to St. Martin, who will be defending the west side of the field. Hawks will be defending the, the, the east side, closest to the baseball field and the, the field house. So Hawks will uh, be on the right side and Yellow Jackets on the left. So the Yellow Jackets will be traveling left to right on your radio dial when we get started here shortly in less than two minutes. Um, just antem anticipation is killing me. Let me open this window up and see if we can hear this double D announcement that they said they had. Absolutely sell out crowd here in Hancock. St. Martin makes their way home. St. Martin uh, enters the field. And out front for the Hawks, leading the way is going to be Bryce Landon and Zach DeLong with the, with the flags, ready to lead the charge on the field. Let me stick my headset out. Bear with me, folks. Was folks Friday night in Kill, Mississippi? There's no better place to be on a Friday night than in Kill, Mississippi, here not, at Brett Favre Field. And quite honestly, there's nothing really to do on a Friday night <laughs> than be here watching the Hawks play football. Uh, Kill's small town, uh, ain't really much to do around here but play sports. And I don't know why you wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Hawks. Might be having a little bit of some technical difficulties on there and on the <laughs> Here come your Hancock Hawks to an over the season. That's just a great tribute to Double D for them to be able to keep that tradition going and have that on uh, audio so where they can use it at any time. Uh, just awesome. Me 
this game is going to be on YouTube as well, uh, synced up uh, with the radio broadcast. Live on YouTube, folks. It'll be me and Andre giving play by play. Powell has the, the ball on the tee and kicks it deep. Gonna be returned by Norell White at the from the two. He loses his footing and he stopped and ran the tw right at the 20. So right where they would have got it anyways if he would have let it just go in the end zone. So St. Martin to be uh, first and 10 at the 20 going left to right. You got to look for the Hawks' defense uh, to, you know, set the tone for the for the game right here. Oh yeah, and uh, the person that's been setting the tone early for the Hawks on defense in the first drive has been 72 Bryce Ladner, who's been coming up with big plays on third downs on those first drives. So White's in the shotgun, running back to his right, two receivers to the right. It's gonna be a handoff up the middle, and there he is. Gonna make the first uh, attempt at the tackle is uh, Bryce Ladner and Jeffrey Hopgood. Casey Wheat uh, finishing it up. And I think Aiden Taylor was also in on that tackle, too. You are correct. So, he got the wind knocked out of him. So, uh, it's going to be an official timeout slash a little injury timeout for number for, uh, for Wales to get off the, uh, off the field. But just like we talked about, uh, you know, Bryce Lander being a big presence on the, on the deepest side of the field. And he's getting in there right away on the first play. So White in the shotgun, running back to his right. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. And here comes a late flag. It looked like Devin Biddle might have jumped. I thought he might have got back. But uh, they... Uh, Calling neutral zone infraction. So instead of second and eight, it's going to be second and three. Not putting yourself in a good position to start off with right here. No, you're not. So you, 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 now you got to you got to make up for it with a with a good play. Right? You got to buckle up and uh, get dirty and make the play. <clears throat> right in the shotgun, running back to his right. Man in motion, right to left. That's the wing back. Right. Fakes the handoff, tries to keep it, and he's going to be bottled up and stopped right away. Great read right there. And that was Biddle getting some of the yards back, not being fooled. Jumped off sides and said, I got to make a big play right here. Um, it brings up a third and third and about four. So that was a tackle for loss by uh, Devin Biddle. White in the shotgun. Running back to his right. Two receivers right. One to the left. Passing situation maybe. White trying to draw him off sides with the hard count. White looking to throw. Pumps it. Throws it outside. Bobbled and caught. And going to be tackled by Dante Taylor. And that was uh, Jackson Walker on the catch. It might have been just enough for a uh, yellow jacket first down. Looked like he would, uh, was going up. No, no, he had it marked up there. And they marked it. A, actually, he was a yard short. So, going to be fourth and one. And see what the yellow jackets do here faced with uh, a fourth and one situation early. Bring up a fourth and yard. Looks like they might go for it and... and you got Tykevi and Wells back in the backfield. White in the shotgun. Looking over to the sideline for the play call. And there goes uh, the timeout. St. Martin might be thinking it over. And we'll be right back after these messages. First Southern Bank. Simple, easy, and user-friendly. 
Come experience community banking, featuring online services, 24-hour ATMs, and seven locations in Picayune, Richton, Columbia, Oak Grove, and Petal, and our 24-hour ATM in Korea. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. JW Puckett Construction. All right, welcome back, home fans. This is Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here in Brett Favre, Florida, in Kill, Mississippi, where the Yellow Jackets uh, said, now nah, we're not going to go for it. We're going to elect to, to uh, punt it, and that's going to be Owen Daly back deep to punt for the Yellow Jackets. Uh, you still got to probably expect a, a fake right here, maybe, Jay. It's not going to be a fake. It's going to be a kick. And takes a yellow jacket bounce. St. Martin's punt takes a good roll. It's going to be down at about the 20 yard line of Hancock where they'll start first, their first series. Dylan Moran leading the way on the offense by Hancock at quarterback. So Moran in the Hawks offense out on the field. Moran in the shotgun. That's Galon to his right. Two receivers to the right. No safety. It looks like they got six men, six three. Uh, defense starting out right here. And zero coverage on the outside. That's man to man for you uh, out there. Listen, and Galon got a hold on the left side, and he's gone. This could be an 80-yard touchdown for Zach Galon, and that's exactly what it is. First play, first play strike, and we mentioned it before, Andre. This is a quick strike offense, and when you see a, a defense set up like that, it's going to get exposed right away by this Hawks offense. Yeah, that's just, you know, a great job of uh – of Zach being who he is, you know, taking over a ball game right there for an 80-yard strike to start it off for the Hawks. I mean, I don't know if that was what the play was called or if it got audible into that, but Moran saw something on that left side. Galong hit it, and he was untouched. No one put a paw on Zach Galong, and he, he hit the outside, took up the sideline, and that's the biggest run of that young man's career. And Powell's extra point gets blocked. We still have not figured out this extra point situation. Extra point troubles are continuing for the Hawks here in the third game of the season. So your Hawks lead early 6-0 here at home versus the St. Martin Yellow Jackets. And we got to, I said it last week, and I'm going to keep saying it until we get it figured out. We have to figure out this extra point team. I just want to apologize if I call. Uh, getting over from being sick a little bit this past week. Um, so I might have an unexpected call here and there. If I do, I apologize. So Powell got the ball on the tee. Powell puts a foot into it. Nice. Deep kick received, and he and that's going to be a block okay. in the back, and that's going to bring it back. But you see two flags flying in from the left side. Whoa, whoa. Holding is the call against St. Mark. No, no more. He's got, he's got to just stay. He's got to play. He's got to play. That's, he's got to make 37 right. Is what he's got to do. Holding is the call against St. Mark. So that was a holding, not a block. The 10 yard line. And now it's going to be first and 10 at the 10 yard line. Yeah, I couldn't tell the header at 11, 10, but. It looks it, closer to the 10. Yeah, you know, 10, 10 yard line. So. The other jack is traveling left to right on the radio dial. And if y'all heard any foul language, I don't apologize. Uh, right next to the St. Martin uh, So White in the shotgun, running back to his left. Hands it off. And it's going to be bottled up right away by Aiden Taylor. 
because Jeffrey Hopgood, Aiden Taylor, I called it in the pregame. I said, look for Aiden Taylor to have a big game. This might be the game that he, you know, he has probably the biggest game of the season, maybe. So that's a tackle for a loss, also. Uh, it's now second and 11 for the Yellow Jackets. Yellow Jackets lost a big win last week to Pedal. That's who we play next week, folks. Uh, we travel up to Pedal, another away game. So it's going to be a lot of away games this season. Uh, this is just one of the, the four home games for the Hawks this year. Man in motion, right to left, and they got a penalty coming in. Um, might be a delayed game. I don't. And actually, it was a timeout called, in, I believe. So we'll be right back after these messages. Physical therapy has evolved into specialized care for patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. Dr. Jamison Dodd with Dodd Therapy Center in Picayune is LSVT Big certified for treatment of Parkinson's disease. LSVT Big trains people with Parkinson's to use their body more normally and improve movements for any activity, whether small motor tasks like buttoning a shirt or large motor tasks like getting up from a sofa or chair or maintaining balance while walking. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call today at 769-242-2636 or stop by at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here on WRJW 106.9 FM, or 1320 AM. Click on the link in the WRJW app and listen to us live. White in the shotgun, running back to his left. White looking to throw. Goes up top, has a man. It's going to be caught for about 15 yards. Maybe. Yeah, 15 yards, and that's going to be a yellow jacket first down. Oh, White's first pass attempt. No, second pass attempt. I'm sorry. I believe the one earlier where they were short of the first down. So, first and 10 yellow jackets at the 25. The old Miss commit in the shotgun. Three receivers to the right, one to the left, running back to his right. Hands it off. No, keeps it. Puts a move on Casey Wheat, then puts a move on another guy. White has the edge. And he's going to be tackled by Trey Robinson. Trey Robinson. I always, I always want to say Trey Jackson for some reason. Trey Robinson with the uh, touchdown save and tackle. And that's what we talked about in the pregame. Norio White getting in space, and, you know, if you don't get a hand on him, he could be gone at any moment. It, it, it kind of was the, their version of Tavares Charles getting on outside. Uh, the Hawks have great run defense inside the tackles, but it seems like once uh, somebody gets to the outside, it, our angles are not quite there. So White in the shotgun, running back to his left, three receivers to the left. Fakes the handoff, looking to throw. He's rolling left, looking to throw it. And don't know if it was caught or not. And it was, and a late flag comes in. Mike, this type of flag looks like it could be a legal man downfield. I don't know. We'll see if the, what the call is. Because uh, uh, White was rolling, and, you know, when you got linemen out there, they, they think the quarterback might run, so. And I think that's what it was. I think it was a legal man downfield. Illegal participation is the call. We call it. Here we go. We're all right. Not a 10-yard winner, is it? Penalty against St. Martin. Moves the ball back. Inside the 40-yard line to about the 37-yard line. So they move it back five yards. Correction. 42 yard line, I'm sorry. First and long for St. Martin. So White in the shotgun, running back uh, slightly behind them to the right. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. And going to be another flag. The play. And Did Paul foul? Paul start. Paul start on the Yellow Jackets on number 54. Joshua Taylor, and after a big play, Yellow Jackets shoot themselves in the foot with back-to-back -back penalties, back to back to oh, 10 yards. So now they're at the Hawks 47, 48. 47 yards. 
White in the shotgun, same formation. White hands it off up the middle. And going to be oh. ate up right away by Bryce Ladner. Uh, Bryce Ladner, you know, every every week he's uh, he's the force on the defensive line and he's the motor that runs it. And every week he just finds himself in the backfield I mean, multiple that's, plays. Dre, that's not a small guy he's tackling either. They, they, there's the guy, Sakavian Wells, is listed as a defensive tackle. Uh, he's a big boy. And, and Bryce, Bryce Ladner's just... Putting a body on him. That's a that's like it's like two sumo wrestlers going at it almost. White in the shotgun. Wells could have got called. Martin St. Martin with the wheel route and it's gonna be caught right at the original line of scrimmage. And Casey Wheat got up there and looked like he uh, was about to deflect it, but it went right over the outstretched arm for Casey Wheat and caught and still a yard behind the original line of scrimmage for third and eleven. So 3rd and 11 for the Yellow Jackets. Norio White in the shotgun. Wide receiver to the right. Three to the left. Man in motion. Left to right. And... Oh, what a great open field tackle right there by Casey Wheat to, to save a first down. Don't know what the Yellow Jackets were thinking right there. The man in motion and... He could have had him if he would have threw it, but he decided to just tuck it and run. So now, great open field tackle right there by Casey Weed. Going to bring up a fourth and about two, almost three. We'll call it two, though, for the, for the Yellow Jackets. See what the Hawks defense dials up right here. This is where I said you're probably going to spy... Uh, Aiden Taylor on Norio White. Yeah, this is, you know, and there's a timeout called, and we'll be right back after these messages. St. Mark. You can say goodbye to the guesswork. We make it easy as one, two, three. When you come by Papa's Campus City for a trailer or RV. Selling RVs till the cows come home. Hey, neighbors, check out this new 2023 Coachman Freelander Class C. This 23-footer has a full wall slide and is on a Ford chassis. MSRP 126-165. It's been reduced to only $79,987. Don't go and pay more for a new 2022 model than you can get a new 2023 for. Check out Pawpaw's entire inventory at rvbestprice.com. Selling RVs till the cows come home. Great service, great price, now in the nice. You're gonna love the way we deal. Pop Pop's Camper City and pick all you. Yeah, boy. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You're gonna love the way we deal. Welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here at Brett Favre Field in Kill, Mississippi, where the Yellow Jackets are faced with a fourth and short situation in Hancock territory. And they're going to go for it. You got the Ole Miss commit at quarterback. In the shotgun formation. Bunch to the left, short side of the field. Three receivers on the short side. Fakes the handoff white. No, nowhere. I don't know what they were thinking on that. And, and Bryce Ladner again. Looks like he took the ball away from White. Along with that play was I also mean, Jeffrey Hopgood, too. And Casey. No, Aiden Taylor. But I think you give uh, Bryce Ladner, even though it was a fourth down stop, uh, he actually took the ball from Norio White, so give him the fumble recovery. <laughs> Oh, and this is a heat timeout, so we'll be right back after these messages. Hey, people, we're selling RVs till the cows come home this month at Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune. Look at this new 2023 and... Dr. Hermaine Amante, Chair of Surgery and Trauma Medical Director, Highland Community Hospital. Over the last 10 years, the Highland Surgery Department have grown exponentially. We have been able to add multiple services to our surgery department, which includes urology, general surgery, advanced laparoscopic surgery, ENT, as well as ophthalmology. Highland Community Hospital, here when you need us most. 
For more information, go to highlandch.com. And it was confirmed on the YouTube, Bryce Ladner did take the ball away from L'Oreal White as he was falling backwards. All right, here we go. Yeah, and here we go. All, second all offensive field. possession. Moray in the shotgun, go long to his right. Same defensive situation. Moray goes up top. And in and out of the hands. Of Neil Acker. Oh, wow. So not the start that we had last week, uh, eight for eight. And took the shot. It was there. I mean, it's one on one. You go, you go for that play every time. I think more and every time he has one on one situation with his receivers, he's going to take it. Uh, so more and looking over to the uh, sideline for the play call. Two receivers to the left, running back to his left. Again, nobody in the middle of the field. Moran decides to keep it himself. And what a pick up, maybe a yard on the play. Moran in the shotgun, looking to throw. Has a man. Puts it in the air. And, oh, Neil dives for it. And incomplete. So the Hawks, after having a turnover on downs, looks like they're going to punt here. Brings up a fourth down for Hancock. And. No, guys, y'all, why'd y'all take Yusef off the field? Nobody, nobody down left on the. On the oh, he could have threw it to uh, Christoph Gagne. Nobody was even covering him. Oh, it, it, oh! The ball bounced and hit the, the returner, and Christoph Gagne almost recovered it for the Hawks before it went out of bounds. Fresh and fifth wheel, two forty. What you mean? Talking to my kids? Yeah, I'll, I'll stop cussing, but I can't hit with the loud guy. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. So. Here we go, first and ten for St. Martin. You hear that static? Is it, do you hear static? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, great punt right there by the Hawks. Going to set up uh, first and ten for the Yellow Jackets at around the 15-yard line. So White in the shotgun, running back to his right. Looking to throw. That was a, and the guy wasn't even That's looking. Incomplete. So it's going to be incomplete and bring up second and ten for the Yellow Jackets. So Hawks defense looking pretty good so far, uh, other than the the one long run that they gave up to White, but they were able to put a good um, defensive stance together after that long run and get the ball back. Just didn't uh, wasn't able to get anything going. Had two pretty good opportunities, uh, but look for those to open up if they keep playing that uh, that type of defense with no safety over the top. So White in the shotgun, three receivers to the left, one to the right, running back to his left. Gets the snap. Looking to throw. Pump fakes it, brings it down. And it's going to be tackled. Takes the pass, takes it in, and runs up. Santee. Santee. And that's going to bring up third and about three for the Yellow Jackets. So although uh, White has completed a couple passes, it looks like he's he's taking the pump fake approach and just pulling it in. <coughs> Excuse me, and running. White in the shotgun, running back to his right. Three receivers to the left. One receiver to the right. Keeps it 
Keeps it around the right side. And going to be called for holding. Quarterback. Holding on the outside, it gave uh, White the they edge to down, get the three four, yards, but it's, that's going to be coming back and bringing up a, a third and long situation for the Yellow Jackets. Julian Sante on the stop for Hancock. There's the flag on the play, and it's against St. Martin. Holding is the call. Oh, that doesn't look like a good uh, leader right there. Pushing the offensive lineman. <laughs> I mean, I know you can get upset if a player makes a, but I mean, you got to keep your composure. You got to keep your composure, whether you committed to Ole Miss or not. Uh, you, that guy's blocking for you. He could just miss his block on purpose and say, "Hey, eat him up, Hancock." White looking to throw. Goes deep and nowhere near the receiver. Doing about 15 yards too long for the intended receiver Jackson Walker. And what was a could have been a first down situation is now a fourth down and long and, and looks like the Yellow Jackets are going to punt. Back deep for the Hawks is Ty Dito. Low snap, low drive kick, and doesn't even cross midfield. It's going to be a great field position. And Hawks, with uh, two minutes and 53 seconds left in the first quarter, is going to start first and 10 at about the 43, 43-yard line. So here comes Moran in the Hawks offense. See if Moran can get his first completion. On this drive. Nobody on Dito. And somebody moves over to Dito. And off to Galong, around the left side. Galong, follows his blockers. And he's going to be tackled at the 35 yard line. So, eight yard carry right there for Zach Galong. We're going to bring up second and about two. All right in the shotgun, two receivers to the right. Hands off to Galong again, around the other side. And. They're going to keep doing it. He's got to get lost all the way up. Gavin's got to come out. Gavin's got to come out. He's running it up. He's got to come out again. We got two Yellow Jacket players with their helmets off. JT and JT and JT. So the uh, rule in high school football is if your helmet comes off, you have to come out for a play. Third down, buddy. So uh, that was a zero toss, yard, toss, toss, zero toss, yard uh, toss, 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 run for Galong. Galong on the outside gets get a block, and it looks like he's going to pick up about five about five yards in the Hawks first down. Galong to the left of Moran. Toss to Moran. I mean, Galong. Galong <laughs> following his blockers. And he's just, he's just bobbing and weaving through all these yellow jackets. It looks like they're right there and have him. But he still manages to pick up two, three yards. Yeah, that's uh, – we all know Zach Galong. He has a great vision. He's a great ball carrier. So he knows what he needs to do to get the yards. Moran in the shotgun. Galong to his right. Two receivers to the right. Looking to throw. Has a man. Neil Acker open, and that's going to be a Hawks touchdown. But there's a flag on the play. It's going to be a holding call on the Hawks, and Zach Galong is the one that's going to be called for the holding. And that just negates Moran's first completion of the night, which would have been a 29-yard touchdown pass to Neil Acker, who absolutely had the – had the guy toast it. Can we get Romain back in the game? Can he go? So it's going to back back him up. It's a spot foul. So now it's going to be second in about. We're going to repeat the down. It's a spot foul. Hey, that's got to be five more yards. That's a hole. 
He's got a timeout situation coming up, and we'll be right back after these messages. Timeout on the field. First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune would like to say a huge thank you to their loyal customers. First Place Express Car Wash is happy to serve its local community with two locations, Highway 11 North just past Coast Electric and Highway 43 South just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4. First Place Express Car Wash is locally owned and operated. You know they'll treat you right. Remember, when it comes to your vehicle shine, First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune will have you saying, if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. Now hiring at the Highway 43 location. All right. Welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing the game live here in Kill, Mississippi on Brett Favre Field. It's going to be a five-yard penalty. Uh, looks like there was a man lined up uh, in the neutral zone. So Hawks are going to get five of those yards back from that holding penalty. Maybe five yards back for Hancock. So here we go. Moran in the shotgun. Two receivers to the right. Zach Belong to his right. At the wing back spot is Jeffrey Hotgood. Man in motion. Left to right. Moran looking to throw. Fakes a man. Has a man. Throws it. Has Ty Dito. And that's going to be a touchdown from 35 yards. Moran to Ty Dito. 35-yard touchdown, and what a way to get your first completion on the night, Andre. Yeah, you know, he welcomes back Ty Dita from his hamstring injury with a strike and a score for the Hawks. And what a throw. You, you, like you said, a strike. Uh, there was no question about it. Uh, the, there was perfect. I mean, there was just the right amount of air to get right where it needed to be, and the, and the ball pretty much was on a rope, and Moran showing why he's one of the top quarterbacks on the coast of Mississippi right there with that throw. See if we can get the extra point uh, situation figured out right here. As your Hawks lead 12-0 with 33 seconds left in the first quarter, and we'll be right back after these messages. When you wake up with an aching back or sore neck, Dr. Debbie Moore with Moore Chiropractic Clinic suggests you consider making simple changes in your sleeping position to alleviate unnecessary strain on your body. According to the American Chiropractic Association and Dr. Debbie Moore, it's best to sleep on your back or side because laying on your back or side allows your head, neck, and spine to relax into their natural alignment. This will help you wake up pain-free and feeling rejuvenated. Moore Chiropractic Clinic, we've got your back. Picked it up. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. So, uh, during the extra point, yeah, uh, bad low snap, but Ty Dito picks it up and almost gets it in for the two-point conversion. So, again, uh, the Hawks uh, are having trouble on the extra point attempt and now lead 12-0 with 33 seconds left in the first quarter. A lot of football still left here to play between the Hawks and the St. Martin Yellow Jackets. What a play right there by Moran to Ty Dito. Uh, play action. Had a guy come in on him. He shook the defender off. Saw Dito and just unleashed the cannon. Powell got the ball on the tee. Sky kick. Gotta be tackle right there. That's a play cows with the tackle at the 35. So. Let me yellow, uh, yellow Jack is going to start off with some pretty good field position right here. And got back on the defense. Up on the board. See if this Hawks defense can stay stingy. Right now they're playing pretty much uh, bend, but don't break defense. 
giving up a few plays here and there, but then found a way to lock it down. They got a new quarterback in the game for the Yellow Jackets, and that's going to be Cameron Romero, who's in the shotgun. There's no Noriel White on the on the field. And his first play is going to be a sack, and he's going to have to come out the game. There's Aiden Taylor yet again. <laughs> Huge play right there by Aiden Taylor, and that guy's going to have to come out the game and then. Another quarterback, Logan Jeffries, junior quarterback, coming in. So no Muriel White. Don't know if the coaching staff took him out the game for pushing his offensive lineman or not, but uh, do not see him. And that's the end of the first quarter. And they're going to switch fields. And when they switch fields, we're going to play a commercial. So we'll be right back after these messages. Sonic Drive-In's menu is heating up with the all-new Buffalo Chicken Dip Bites. It features a crispy fried pocket filled with cheddar cheese blended together and then stuffed and fried to perfection in a crispy golden wrapper. Stop by and try them for yourself at Sonic Drive-In on Highway 11, just north of Highway 43 North. Go ahead, push that red button for happy eating at its best. That's what you get at Sonic Drive-In at Piggyune. S&P contracting. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Yeah, Andre Underwood. Bring the game live here in Kill, Mississippi at Brett Favre Field. And it just looks, it's, it's beautiful out here tonight, Dre. You got the bright lights. Reminds you of uh, everything you read about when you read the, the book Friday Night Lights. Um, this is what it is. It's Friday Night Lights here in Kill, Mississippi, uh, where your Hawks lead 12-0 at the beginning of the second quarter. I'm searching for answers here. And it ain't the run game. The first play, definitely didn't get lined up. Like, I don't understand what he don't understand about Fox. We did it all week. He bumps over and he picked the defensive play on the back play of the first quarter for Hancock. Jesus Christ. He had that the same formation all week long. Preston goes to the damn wing back. Puts the ball at the St. Martin 27 yard line where we second down. Long. Here we go to start the second quarter. Different quarterback in there. Just took a sack on his first play. Again, that's Cameron Romero. Hands it off. And a little bit of running room. Gets a couple yards back. I mean, that was a huge sack by Aiden Taylor. That was a, about a 10-yard loss in itself. So it's going to be uh, about a four, four or five-yard game, maybe, by uh, Tykebian Wells. So it brings up third and about... 15, 30, 14. Number 43 on that defensive line for Hancock. Jackson Knight. Romero in the shotgun, running back to his left, two receivers to the left. Takes the snap. He's looking to throw. Has a man across the middle, and it's going to be intercepted. And there he is, Trey Robinson. <laughs> I was about to say Jackson. Trey Robinson on the interception for the Hawk. No, they call it an incomplete. I don't know about that. Uh, that looked pretty complete to me. So instead of the Hawks getting the ball back, it's going to bring on fourth and long. See you, uh. If we can get it on the YouTube, see the replay right here. Nice defensive play there by number seven. A little bit of a delay. Larry Jackson Robinson. You can if it depends on the formation, coach. They go twins over, they can't. So back deep for the Hawks is uh, Ty Dito. And Trey Robinson might have got robbed of an interception right there. Here comes a flag. Is that a delay game? Back deep by Hancock, number 13, Ty Dito. For whatever reason, we can't get up on the field and get lined up. I don't understand why we just There's a penalty marched off against St. Martin. Oh, yeah. Nah, it did maybe skip a little bit right in front of him. Still a great effort right there by Trey Robinson defensively. So, uh, Dino with his heels on the 40. Going to be a short punt. And it's going to go out of bounds at about the 44. Yeah. 44-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. So big cock week. Great pass position to start their first possession in the second quarter. And Morin and the Hawks looking to put this thing away early. 
we saw what happened last time. They got great field position to start. Oh, yes, absolutely. Ran it a few times and then found the man open. Well, he got Maureen in the shotgun. Maloney to his left. Receiver to the left, one to the right. Fake the handoff. Goes up top and just out of the outstretched arms of Braxton Johnson. And here comes a flag. So uh, not going to be an incompletion for Moran. Penalty on the play. Pass interference. And guy was just draped and hanging on Braxton Johnson's jersey like he was a part of it. Oh, well, Braxton Johnson was scored easy the right there on the little the wheel route, tight end wheel route. Right. So, Hancock getting some yardage the via the pass interference. Moran looking over to the sideline for the play call. Moran in the shotgun. Receiver to the left, one to the right. Guy playing in Neil Acker's face. And he gets a good release, and Neil Acker would have been wide open down the middle of the field, but it was a handoff to Galong, and Galong's going to pick up maybe a yard on the play. Hancock brings it off the right side of the offensive line there. Picks up good yardage. Oh, if Moran would have just pulled it and threw it, it would have been a wide open touchdown. Moran, fake. Double handoff. Uh, Galang to Google. Hopgood, and Hopgood's first Hopgood carry. With the ball. He's going to go for about a yard. A couple of yards. We're going to bring up a third and long situation right here for Maureen and the Hawks. We're bring up a third and we'll call it seven. Maureen looking to throw. Has a man. Throws the post and it's wide open. And that's going to be a touchdown, Neil Acker. And that's going to be a 26-yard touchdown. More in to Neil Acker for his second touchdown of the night. And Neil's first first reception, first touchdown. Seems to be a theme for both the receivers so far tonight. Uh, Dito for a 35-yarder. And then now Neil Acker with the 26-yard touchdown. And more in, and the Hawks offense is out uh, for the two-point conversion try. Uh, you know, third and long situation, and, and Hancock, you, you're playing up on these Hancock receivers like you're not respecting them, and it, they're gonna they're gonna outbeat you every time. Moran rolls, throws, is gonna be completed to Braxton Johnson for the two point conversion. So Moran to Johnston for the two point conversion. On the reception, number 42, for the extra point. And that brings your Hawks. Braxton Johnson. 20 to 0 with 9 minutes and 41 seconds left in the second quarter. And the, and the Hawks offense is just staying on fire. Sam Powell. So Powell putting the, the ball on the tee, looking to kick it deep. And Powell puts a foot into it. Hey, uh, and that's on the play. Over on the far side line. Offsides look like it's going to be call offsides on the kickoff team. So Powell's going to have to do it all over again. So Moran, two for four on the night. 61 yard passing. Offside two touchdowns. So now I got a feeling his night's not over if they keep showing this type of coverage on the defensive side of the ball for the Yellow Jackets, right? Yeah, I feel like, you know, if they keep on showing what they're showing, Moran's just going to eat it up alive to the Twin Towers, and who knows who else might catch a touchdown pass from him tonight. Yeah, you, you know, you, it, it's just this is what he. He thrived in all summer in the seven on seven tournaments that he played in. Like that's basically what you're giving him. You're giving him one on one uh, with any of, any of his receivers, and uh, Moran's just going to show who he is. He's that guy. Powell puts another big foot into it, and it didn't even matter that it backed him up five yards. He still drove it into the end zone, and 
kid has a leg, so I don't, you know, we got to figure out this extra point situation because Powell has a leg on him. So the Yellow Jackets are going to start first and 10 at the 20. See who the uh, Yellow Jackets bring out at quarterback this drive. And it looks like it's going to be Romero again. So no uh, Ole Miss commit on the field. Romero in the shotgun, running back to his right. Two, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Trying to get the, the hard count. Running back shifts from the right to the left. Romero looking to throw. Throws it out in the flats. And met right away and tackled by... Trey Robinson and Casey Wheat. Casey Wheat, the first one on the initial contact. And that might have been a completion of zero yards. It, yep. It, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage and was met right away by Casey Wheat. And then flying up to help was Trey Robinson. So, like you said, walking away right now from the defense after getting beat deep, that kind of shit pisses me off. Shoot some ass in the secondary and get him right. I want somebody to do. Romero in the shotgun, running back to his left, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Looking to hand it off. And we're going to be tackled after about a five-yard carry, about five and a half yards. So going to bring up third, third and about four and a half for the Yellow Jackets. Third and a long four. So Romero in the shotgun, two receivers to the left, running back to his right, one receiver to the right. Gets the snap, hands it off again in the middle. And going to be eight up and tackled right away by the Coast's leading tackler from last season, Jeffrey Hopgood. Shoots the gap, and the one way to take a big man down is hit him low. <laughs> he hit him low and took him down right away for it looked like about a yard, two yard loss. Great play right there by Hopgood to, to give the Hawks possibly some pretty good field position again if, if this punter doesn't get a foot into it. You know, Jeffrey Sardi so low to the ground with him being the short person he is. He didn't have to go much further to get the tackle for loss there. And this one was almost blocked. And not a bad punt. Going to bring it up past midfield at about the 39 yard line of the Hawks. 39 yard line. So Moran and the Hawks are going to start next possession off first and 10 at the 39. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, commercial started playing. I, I didn't hit anything. Uh, Moran uh, just hit Jeffrey Alpgood out of the flats for a nine-yard reception. Going to bring up second and one. Bring up a second and short for Hancock. Moran looking over to the sideline for the play call. Why is second on the tight end side? Why is second on the tight end side? Time out. on the tight end side. Going to be a timeout called and. Uh, now we will go to a commercial, and we're going to hear from Andre's uh, college real quick, PRCC. Pearl River Community College has been providing a quality education to the people of South Mississippi and beyond for the past 110 years. If you or a family member is an alumnus of this great institution, we invite you to support future PRCC students through the PRCC Foundation Scholarship Program. Honor or memorialize a loved one or identify your support for the college by creating a scholarship through the PRCC Foundation with your tax-deductible financial gift. Call Delana Harris with the PRCC Foundation Office at 601 
403-1191 and make a financial investment in a young person's future at Pearl River Community College. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. I'm Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here on WRJW. 1328 a.m. 106.9 FM. It's going to be a second and one situation after the pass in the flats to Hopgood out of the backfield. Murray in the shotgun. Takes the handoff, looking to throw. Gets away from a person. And just going to do the smart thing. No, he, he looks like he's going to throw it out of bounds, but he throws it complete to the comeback to Neil Acker at around the 40 yard line. So that was a 11 yard reception. More in the hacker. What a play that was right there by Dylan Moran. It yeah, looked look. like he was going to throw it away, and uh, he found Neil for the first down. Yeah, Neil, uh, right play to bail his quarterback out and just getting his feet right down the edge and, and, and toe tapping it in. More in the shotgun, running back to his left. Hand off to Galon, up the middle, and Galon going to be stopped after about a yard. Not much One yard though. carry. So he's going to add about a one yard carry to about the 39 yard line. Lauren looking to the uh, sideline for the play call. You got two receivers to the left. Running back to his left. Hop good, the wing back to the right. Lauren gets a snap. Hands off the. Go long, go long. Final follow on his blocker. Just keeping the ladies going. It might go into the end zone, and he does. Zach DeLong for a 39-yard touchdown for the Hawks for them to put another one up on the on the scoreboard. And your Hawks now lead 26 to nothing here at home. And what a way, Andre, to start off your first home game. Yeah, you know, uh, the Hawks offense, they're just firing in all cylinders right now. And then they got the defense playing pretty much flawless outside of a few plays right now. So it looks like a looks like there's a, a hawk or a yellow jacket on the field. Looks like a St. Martin player might be uh, down on the field with a heat cramp, possibly. So while he while he gets tended to, we'll be right back after these messages. He's up and walking off. That's a good time. First Southern Bank believes that banking should be personal and convenient, and that's exactly the type of service you will receive at First Southern Bank. Open your account at First there Southern Bank at 1321 way. Highway 43 uh, North in Picayune, and you can experience a true back. hometown banking experience. First Southern Bank is personal enough to handle all your banking needs and big enough to handle all your mortgage needs. Convenient locations, personal friendly service, and mortgage experts. That's First Southern Bank, true hometown banking at its best. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. Had a lot going on right there. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing the game live here in Kip Mississippi. So that touchdown is getting brought back. It was a penalty on the on the play, apparently. We did not see a flag. So now second and about five for the Hawks. Morgan in the shotgun. Two receivers to the left. Running back to the left. Morgan. Hands off to Galon. We're on the right side. And it looks like the same exact play with nobody holding this time. And that of it is... A 39 yarder. Looks like it's just a 36 yarder. Same exact play. It would look like basically like deja vu. Yeah, you know, they, uh, they dot up Zach's number again and uh, he just took it to the house right away. Yeah, it looked like it, uh, it, instead of him, it, it was the same exact play, but instead of him getting outside like he did the play before, looks like he cut it one gap shorter. He cut it inside, but it went in untouched for 36 yards. So instead of a 39 yarder, it was a 36 yarder. And now Moran in the Hawks offense on for the two point conversion attempt. Quick pitch to Galong. Galong looking to throw. Has a man. And Galong throws the two point conversion to Neil Acker. So a little trickery right there on the two point conversion try. Neil Acker from 
none other than Mr. I guess Mr. can do it all now. Zach Galong can th- apparently throw the balls, right? I definitely didn't know that, so that's a that's a new one for me. He's gonna be all giddy about it after the game. I'm gonna uh, actually, uh, I'm gonna have to talk to him about that. So now your Hawks lead at home, 28 to zero, against the visiting St. Martin Yellow Jackets with six minutes and seven seconds left in this uh, before the half. Moran, who started off uh, 0 for 2, is now 4 for his last four, right? Yeah, you know, Moran, he started off slow, but since then he's uh, he's found his groove and he's he's showing who he is. Oh, has it kicked deep. Got around the 5, and he brings it up to about the 25, so 20 yard return right there. So now looking like that was Jackson Walker of the Yellow Jackets on the return. Officials timeout. So I think this is going to be a heat timeout situation, and we'll be right back after these messages. We would like to thank our hey people. We're selling RVs till the cows come home this month at Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune. Look at this new 2023 Impression 5th Wheel 240RE by Forest River. This 5th wheel is a 24-footer with a rear entertainment floor plan with a fireplace and outside kitchen. Don't pay more for a new 2022 model than you can get a new 2023 for. Selling RVs till the cows come home all month long in Picayune. Physical therapy has evolved. And Smith Gravel and Trucking. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here in Kill, Mississippi at Brett Farm Field, where your Hancock Hawks lead with six minutes and one second left on the clock, 28 0. And still no sighting of the Ole Miss commit, Noreo White. Not even at the wide receiver position, Andre. Romero on the shotgun, handoff up the middle. And Wells looking for Number room and stumbles and bumbles and falls for about a yard. I give him two. They actually marked it two yards. So second and eight for the Yellow Jackets. Who was on that tackle, Dre? Uh, from what I saw, I think it was Bryce Ladner and maybe Jeffrey Hopgood. All right, Romero on the shotgun. And that's Wells to his left. Two receivers to the left. One to the right. Man in motion, right, left to right. Romero throws it, a little bubble screen, and in and out of the hands of the attendant receiver. It goes incomplete, bringing up third and long for the Yellow Jackets. You wonder if the, the Yellow Jackets don't get it right here, if they're going to go for it or not, you know, being down 28 nothing. And in comes uh, Jerry Smith for the Hawks. Giving Devin Biddle a little bit of a breather. Some fresh legs out there. Romero rolling and incomplete. Nice pass pick up right there by Tyrone Ramsey on uh, Jackson Walker. Ramsey comes up and just. There's a flag on the play. Roughing the passer. It is a roughing the passer penalty. So that's going to give. Instead of a fourth down situation, going to give the Yellow Jackets an automatic first down. And we ball up this right around the 41 yard line. So that's going to be 15 yards in a first down for the Yellow Jackets. So first down and 10 at the. I'd say the 41, Dre, 40. Looks like the 41. Yeah, 41, because uh, they got to get to the 49 for the first down. Romero on the shotgun. Hands it off. He's going to be stopped right away. No and that's uh, Big number 43, Jackson Knight there Jackson on the tackle Knight for the coming. loss. We say his name every week too. He's a he's another one on defense that's a big guy that that can ball. Yeah, you know um, when he gets thrown in the game, he makes the most of his opportunities, and he's always finding a way to get in the backfield. 
Absolutely. So the, the Yellow Jackets are uh, electing to go with the sophomore quarterback still. Don't know what's the word on Noriel White. Quarterback in the shotgun, looking to throw. <laughs> Hesitates. Has a man on the comeback and throws it short at his feet. On the coverage is uh, Christoph Gagne, who was right there with the receiver step for step. Gonna bring up a third and long situation. Correction, third and long, I'm sorry. Third and 11 for the Yellow Jackets. Uh, so hopefully the, the Hawks can get out of, um, don't commit a penalty on this third and long and get the ball back in the hands of Moran and the Hawks. So Murrow in the shotgun, running back to his left, two receivers to the left. One receiver to the right, trying to hard count. Romero looking to the sideline for the play call, for the switch. And Come out. Don't know. Uh, delay of game. Delay of game on the Yellow Jackets. So going to back them up five more and as if they weren't having trouble already. Uh, now they got to find a third and 16 play, Dre. Yeah, and as, we, as we always say, you don't got much for this distance. So Romero on the shotgun, same formation. Two to the left, one to the right. Romero looking to throw. Has a man across the middle. Going to be bounced in, almost intercepted by Hopgood or uh, Ramsey. <laughs> Ramsey. They were Come on, guys, you can't fight over it. I know you both want it, but uh, you both get, I guess, the pass deflection on that and uh, or, pass, or the PBU pass, uh, pass breakup. So going to bring out uh, Owen Daly, the punt for the – and Owen Daly's been having a game. This is like his eighth punt, I think, already. I don't know if it's really his eighth, but he's been punting every possession. Low snap. Puts a foot into it. And it's a straight spiral, like a reception straight to Dito. Dito gets a block. Dito hits up the sideline, finds another block. And going to be tackled and brought inside of the 34-yard line. So about a 36-yard return right there by Ty Dito. And going to give... Dylan Moran and the Hawks, excellent field position. Might have been a penalty on the play. See if there was a penalty. Uh... Personal foul. Yes, tag on another 15. Uh, I, I was wondering why Dito fell like that. Uh, they face masked uh, Ty Dito on the, on, the, on the tackle. And... So 15 more y uh, yards tacked on, and what went from great field position goes to excellent field position because now the Hawks are going to start first and 10 at uh, the 18 at the 18 yard line. Field position, first and 10. Caleb Schaefer on the field. You got Neil Acker on the outside to the left. Schaefer to the right. Moran. Hands off. Double reverse to Schaefer. Schaefer got the edge. He's fast. He's blocked it. Neil Hacker with the block. And Schaefer with the 18 yard run for a touchdown. Just like we saw last week. On the way, touchdown. 18 yards. And, you know, that kid, once he gets outside and there's Green, knows how to make the most of it. Yeah, you know, he got the reverse. It was just, like you said, it was just like last week. And uh, he, he walked in pretty much, and Neil Acker gave him the block at the end there to secure the touchdown. Yeah, Neil, Neil Acker, great downfield blocking right there. That's what you want to see from your receiver. Uh, when he's not out catching the ball, you, you know, you got other duties. And he showed it right there that he has uh, worked on his uh, – Blocking and oh, excellent block because it was only him and the DB and uh, the only person that could have stopped Schaefer from getting in his own was the guy Neil Acker was blocking. And Dre, I don't know, we uh, must have figured it out because uh, Sam Powell just made an extra point. And that puts the Hawks up with 3 minutes and 26 seconds left before half, 35-0 to zero on the St. Martin Yellow Jackets. He 
got to go make it. He sees it, he sees it, now go make it. Don't let the quarterback block you. He needs the quarterback for God's sakes. And something that went unnoticed on that play, Dre, as I watched the replay here on uh, on YouTube was the block by Dylan Moran. What a great block to kind of spring uh, Schaefer on that on that play. Powell puts a foot into it and okay, it's going to be stopped at around the 30-yard line. Boys brought it down by number, looks like six, leading away by Hancock. Looks like that was uh, Michael Acker on the tackle. Michael Acker leading the way on that tackle. So Yellow Jackets still looking to get something uh, going here. And still no sign of their all-world athlete, Noriel White. It looks like the Yellow Jackets are going to another quarterback, and this is going to be Logan Jeffries at the helm. Jeffries in the shotgun, hands it off to Wells. Wells has a hole, gets upfield, makes a man miss, and Wells might put the Yellow Jackets on the board. And going to be tackled at the 20, though. Touchdown saving tackle right there by Dante Taylor. Dante Taylor. It's a big play right there. On the handoff to Wells. Wells found a hole and made the most of it. And that was the Yellow Jackets' biggest play of the night. Going to bring up first and 10 at the 19. Wells said, I need to breathe after that run. About a 51 yard run right there. Off the left side. And that handoff goes, goes to Steven Ramsey. The 15 yard line. Mm, picks up about four. Yellow Jackets looks like they might look like they might have found something here. Could be a little bit too late. Who knows? It's 35 0 with two minutes and 19 seconds in counting. Logan Jeffries in the shotgun. Running back to his left, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Jeffries gets the snap, hands it off. And going to be tackled by Hopkins. In the St. Martin backfield. No gain on the play. And Julian Santee, the two leading tacklers on the Hancock, Hancock Hawks defense. That duo right there, they're, uh, they're both something special, and they're both having fantastic seasons so far. Absolutely. It's like they're c competing with each other. Who's going to get the ball carry the first? And Actually, I think I looked at it earlier. I think they're both separated by just one tackle between the two of them. Oh, yeah. I would, yeah, that sounds about right, Dre. So you got Logan Jeffries in the shotgun, running back to his left. Looks like that might be Wells back in the game. Jeffries looking to throw. Has a wheel route. And, oh, almost intercepted by Dante Taylor, the former quarterback turned corner. And going to bring up a fourth down situation. And if you're the Yellow Jackets, you know, you can't go for a field goal. That does you nothing. You have to go for the touchdown. And this, uh, if the Hawks get a stop right here, this could spoil a big run that, uh, that to give you well set up. So Logan Jeffries in the shotgun. Wells to his left, two receivers to the left, two to the right. They can still pick up the first down. They need about six yards. Jeffries looking to throw. Throws a slant and goes incomplete. So the 51-yard run by Wells is spoiled by back-to-back -back incompletions by Logan Jeffries. So here comes Moran in the Hawks offense now uh, with uh, probably the worst starting position uh, they've had so far. First and 10 around the 15 of the Hawks. So you got Moran in the shotgun, two receivers to the right, two to the left. Running back to the right. 
Moran, let him throw. Swing right to Galong. Galong makes a man miss. Gets up field. Quick pitch to Galong here on the near side. Going to be a one yard completion to Zach Galong. St. Martin comes up on and makes a nice play. Number 37 in on the stop to St. Martin. Looks like uh, it's going to be trips left uh, for the Hawks. Receiver to the to the right and running back to Moran's right. Moran gets a snap. Looking to throw. Comeback route. Going to be complete. Moran pass complete. Uh, complete. Aaron the 30. And that was Caleb Schaefer on the reception for Moran. Caleb Schaefer back on the receiving end. Uh, and that was uh, about a 14, 13, 14 yard reception. Moran in the shotgun. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Moran looking to throw. Man out the backfield. Caught. And that's going to be Galong. Moran out of bounds. At around uh, 30, 38. So nine yard reception. For Zach Galong. Moran in the shotgun. Same formation. Moran looking to throw. Throws it to Galang again. Caught. Makes a man miss. Makes another man miss. And Galang going to be knocked out of bounds around the 49. So an 11-yard reception right there out of the backfield by Galang. And Moran is now 8 for his last 8. First and 10. Three to the left, one receiver to the right. Galong to Moran's right. Moran looking to throw. And it's going to be a penalty. Flag. So what the call is right here. It looks like they call it a false start on the Hawks. So the Hawks slowing themselves down right here with a penalty after it's just like a, pretty much like a, a fast break offense right now, Dre. Yeah, the Moran, you know, he's just dinking and dunking and trying to save as much time as they can. Yeah, it was about 12 seconds left before the half. And, uh, you know, throwing out the backfield and getting out of bounds and throwing the comeback to Schaefer and him getting out of bounds. So, uh, Hawks trying to probably trying to put a big play, uh, big play on the board right here before the half. But nonetheless, Moran, eight for his Ford last Euro game. Insurance company, and, uh, Encore Rehabilitation and just looking very efficient right now. See what kind of play uh, the Hawks draw up. S&B, contract with J.W. Puckett Construction, Ochsner Health System, the Hancock Hall Foundation, Moran you got Moran in the shotgun, and you got the, the, the trips left with Acker, Dito, and Schaefer. Moran in the shotgun. Gets the snap. Looking to throw. And going to go incomplete to Schaefer. So after going 8 for 8 on his last eight attempts. He goes incomplete right there. Brings up a second down. Puts him eight for 11 on the night so far. See what we can get going. Uh, Haycock leads 35 to zero. And we got the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center halftime show coming up. Come on in the shotgun. Bunch right. Quick pitch to Galong. And they're just going to run out the clock to the half. And Galong's going to pick up, Galong trying to work his way pick up, up three yards. The 45, and the clock runs out for first half action. And that's the end of the first half here at Brett Favre Field. And your Hawks lead 35-0 to versus the visiting Yellow Jackets of St. Martin. Again, like I said, we got the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center halftime show. Um, it will begin... In a few seconds, uh, if you have any questions or anything, uh, you can call them at 228-255-4790, or you can just go pay them a visit. 21-330, Highway 603, in the kill. Dixieland, Home Farm and Garden Center. We'll be right back after these messages.
seasoned On outdoorsmen know the key to successful hunting begins with preparation. And the place to get prepared is Dixieland Home Farm and Garden in the kill. Knowing what to plant and when to plant is where Dixieland can help you. They offer soil testing, plot mixes, fertilizers, sporting goods, ammunition, targets, set control, and much more. Hunting and fishing licenses are available. Dixieland Home Farm and Garden on Highway 603 in the Kill, just north of Rocky Hill Dido Road, is open daily 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Follow us on Facebook. Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center, proud supporter of the Hancock Hawks. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. You're listening to the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center halftime show. The first half scoring summary will be coming up here uh, shortly as we tally up the stats. Um, while we tally up the stats, we got the Hancock Hawks, uh, what is that? the St. Martin Band about to perform. So we'll let you guys listen to the St. Martin Band uh, while we tally up these stats. Drum majors, is the band ready? Majors, you may now begin your halftime
This hunting season, hurry to Dixieland Home Farm and Garden for the gear to get you closer. All outdoorsmen know that success begins with preparation, knowing what to plant and when to plant. And Dixieland offers soil testing, plot mixes, and fertilizer. And they have a large variety of sporting goods, ammunition and targets, summit and millennium stands, scent control and ground blinds, and now hunting and fishing licenses. For great deals and friendly service, it's Dixieland Home Farm and Garden, Highway 603 in the Kill, just north of Rocky Hill Dito Road. Open every day, 8 till 6. Find us on Facebook. All right, welcome back, Hawks fans. This is the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center Halftime Show with Aaron Underwood. And Andre Underwood. So, Andre, uh, break down the defensive side of the game. You know, so far on the defensive side, you know, uh, like we've been saying pretty much the whole night, apart from a few plays, the Hawks have uh, they played pretty flawless on defense. And uh, your halftime stats are you have Julian Santee with, with five tackles. Jeffrey Hopgood has six tackles and a pass breakup, one of those tackles being for a loss. Casey Wheat with four tackles and a tackle for loss. Aiden Taylor with also has four, one for a loss, and he also has a sack on the night too. Tyran Ramsey, he has two pass breakups. Christoph Gandes tallied one tackle. Leonard Kempert has a tackle. Bryce Ladner, the big boy up front in the middle of the defensive line for the Hawks, he has five tackles. One of them for a loss, and also a forced and a forced fumble and a fumble recovery. Oh yeah, yeah, he took it from Noriel White. Devin Biddle has a tackle for a loss. Trey Robinson with two tackles. Dante Taylor with two. Jackson Knight with three. One being for a loss. Blake Howes has two, and Michael Acker has one. All right. So this is the Dixie Land Home Farm and Garden Center halftime show. That was the defensive stats. We'll be right back after these messages from Dixieland, and I'll give you the offensive stats. This hunting season, hurry to Dixieland Home Farm and Garden for the gear to get you closer. All outdoorsmen know that success begins with preparation, knowing what to plant and when to plant. And Dixieland offers soil testing, plot mixes, and fertilizer. And they have a large variety of sporting goods, ammunition and targets, summit and millennium stands, scent control and ground blinds, and now hunting and fishing licenses. For great deals and friendly service, it's Dixieland Home Farm and Garden, Highway 603 in the Kill, just north of Rocky Hill Dito Road. Open every day, 8 till 6. Find us on Facebook. All right, welcome back to the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center Halftime Show, where you can uh, get all your home farm and garden center needs from Dixieland, located at 21330 Highway 603 in the Kill, or you can call them at 228-255-4790. And now on the field, just like we let you listen to the St. Martin Band, we're going to let you listen to our Hancock High Marching Band. And
gives you Beetlejuice and Wild. heard me there in the performance, but that kid was snapping on that. Oh, I guess that was the flu. I don't know. Uh, again, you know, I always give the props to the to the band and whatnot, because those those young men and women and, and the color guard, they put in uh, hard work and practice to put on a performance for the for the crowd, and, and they did a great job just now. Again, this is the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center Halftime Show, where you can go and visit Dixieland Home Farm and Garden at 21330 Highway 603 in the Kill or call them at 228-255-4790. And now, some of the offensive stats. Moran in the first half is 8 for 11, 125 yards and two touchdowns. Zach Galong, nine rushes for 136 yards and two touchdowns. The big one, the first play of the game, the 80-yarder. Um, other than that, the only uh, big run he had was, was that 36-yarder. Um, so 136 yards, two touchdowns. You got uh, Schaefer with an 18, one rush for 18 yards and a touchdown. Um, on the receiving end, you got Neil Acker, two receptions, 37 yards and a touchdown, one two-point conversion, um, which was uh, caught from the hands of Zach Galong. Um, you got Ty Dito, 35-yard touchdown. Um, you got Braxton Johnson with a two-point conversion reception. And other than that, the next who's actually leading in receptions is Zach Galong out of the backfield with three receptions for 21 yards, Andre. That's a, that's not something you normally see out of the Hawks' offense is Zach Galong leading, leading the team in receiving yards. It's normally Acker, Dito, who's doing that. No, no, no. Acker is leading in uh, uh, receiving yards. He's leading in receptions. Oh. Three receptions. Um on the night well, right here at the end of the uh, half. Remember, they were throwing in a little leak side of the backfield. Um, so, he has three catches. Gives him 12 touches on the night. And uh, you like to see him with about 20 to 25 touches um, per night. So, uh, look for the Hawks who get the ball at the half to uh, continue this uh, this uh, air assault, ground, ground and pound assault, because everything's working for Hancock right now on offense. And like you stated with the, the, the stats of the defensive side of the ball, the bend but don't break defense. Uh, uh, pitching a shutout so far, um, like I said, 35-0, to zero and just everybody on the field getting involved. And that's what you like to see. You like to see everybody on the, on the team getting involved, making plays. Uh, we named, uh, we called out multiple players' names from the defensive side of the ball on tackles. Um, Morin spreading the ball out um, offensively. Uh, like I said, he has eight uh, eight completions and one, two, three, five different receivers. So uh, you know, and you got a few <laughs> still in there that are uh, that could still receive a catch tonight uh, before the before it's all said and done. So uh, 
when we come back, Dre will give us some uh, scores from around the league. This is the Dixieland Home Farming Garden Center Halftime Show, and we'll be right back after these messages. Seasoned outdoorsmen know the key to successful hunting begins with preparation. And the place to get prepared is Dixieland Home Farm and Garden in the kill. Knowing what to plant and when to plant is where Dixieland can help you. They offer soil testing, plot mixes, fertilizers, sporting goods, ammunition, targets, scent control, and much more. Hunting and fishing licenses are available. Dixieland Home Farm and Garden on Highway 603 in the Kill, just north of Rocky Hill Dido Road, is open daily 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Follow us on Facebook. Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center, proud supporter of the Hancock Hawks. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. And this is the Dixieland Home Farm and Garden Center halftime show, where, again, you can visit them at 21330 Highway 603 in the Kill or call them at 228-255-4790. And we got about 40 seconds left until the second half kickoff. So, Dre, take us around the league. Currently, you have West Harrison leading East Marion 28-6. You have the Bay High Tigers leading Long Beach Bearcats 32-21. You have Picune, who is leading the Iberville 28 to nothing. Gaucher is leading Pascagoula 21-7. And Biloxi is beating George County 21-0. Okay, so Pascagoula made it their first loss on the season, it seems, right? What you said that was? 21-7. 21-7, still, uh, you know, another half in that game as well. But right now, it's your Hawks up 35-0 as they come back on the field at the halftime versus the visiting Yellow Jackets. And the Hawks looking to start the season off 3-0. And are in very good position to do so. Hancock will be receiving the ball to start the second half. Looking to see. Uh, okay, I'm trying to. See what's up with the YouTube feed. What's my next commercial? Diet therapy. There it is. Fans, this is Aaron Underwood. Andre, Andre Underwood. Bringing the game live here on WRJW, where you can find us on the WRJW app. Click on sports, find the Hancock St. Martin game, and listen to us live. Or you can go to YouTube, go to the Hancock County School District uh, YouTube page and watch the game if you're not able to make it out tonight. And we should be synced up with that uh, with that game. Yeah, we are synced up. So uh, back deep for the Hawks is Zach Galong and Ty Dito. Galong and Dito back deep for Hancock. So the kickoff for the first time tonight for the Yellow Jackets. Is Caden Walker and he kicks out of bounds, and that's going to be a penalty. Kick goes out of bounds. Inside the uh, line. It's considered a legal procedure, I believe. I think I said it last week, Dre. And uh, I think instead of getting it at the 20, I think we may get it at the 30. So. 
Well, well actually, so 35. 35 yard line. First and 10. So instead of a, being a oh, touchback and you know, starting at the 20 and it goes out of bounds, you get a 15 yards extra. So a Hancock here to start the first drive in the uh, second half at the 35 yard line. Hancock moving right to left on your radio dial. One running the shotgun, two receivers to the left, running back on the right, running back on the left. Hand off to Hopgood around the left side. Hopgood looking, bounces back, cuts it across the green, and Hopgood has a man to beat. Stutters and Hopgood brings it across the Yellow Jacket territory to the 40. And made a nice run out of it. a 26-yard carry right there for Jeffrey All right Hopgood. 39-yard line of St. Martin. First and 10, Hancock. Exactly 26 yards on their carry by Jeffrey Hopgood, who was bottled up on the left side and just bounced it back across the right side, found a hole, got outside, and uh, had one man to beat him, and the guy was uh, uh, able to get him down. So Morin in the shotgun, running back to his right. Thanks to handoff. Throws the slant to the deal in, in and out of the hands of Neil Acker. And could have been a touchdown right there. Let's go bring up a second and ten for him. Looks like it hit him in the chest and bounced out. Oh, it could have been a big play for Dylan Moran and the Hawks. Again, this uh, Yellow Jacket defense is playing man to man on the receivers. And this might be a false start on Neil right here. Looks like he did get a little bit of a head start. Going back to Arkansas 5. Bring up second and 15. So now it's going to be uh, second and 15 at the 44 yard line. And it's going to bring up a second and long now for Hancock. More right in the shotgun, two receivers to the left, running back to the left, man in motion, right to left. That's Hopgood. Moran looking to throw. Screen has a man, and that's Galong. Galong is going to be still on his feet and tackled inside the three. Takes it all the way down. Talk about the two. The oh, there's a flag. Let's see what the flag's on. Line. Holding. Yeah, it's going to be holding the on the ball. That's going to take away wow. a nice run Another there big play. Zachary Golan. Forty-two yard screen play, negated by a holding play. Fifteen yards down the field. That's not something you want to see when you get a big play and, you know, you set up shop right inside the five-yard line close to the goal line. No, because it was a great play call in that situation. Um, still going to be second and eight after they marked the penalty yardage from where the, the foul occurred. So Hancock still on the plus side of the line of scrimmage. And time Maury out. is going to call a timeout. So, with that being said, we'll be right back after these messages. Get back in the game with Dodd Therapy like Center. Our, Jameson uh, Dodd, a former Martin, college Martin, athlete, Martin, has the specialties, Martin, understanding, Martin, and experience to get your Martin, athlete back in the Martin, game, Martin, including Martin, indoor Martin, turf, Martin, high of mat, blood flow restriction, Martin, trigger Martin, point dry needling, and much more. Dr. Dodd and Dodd Therapy Center also specialize in treating Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call at 769-242-2636 or visit us at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune and get back in the game. Oshner Hill, All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here at WRJW. Hall and and Smith, Kill, Mississippi Brett at Brett Favre Field. I'm trying to figure out, does, uh, since they marked it back, does he get the, the yardage for the reception? Or does he just get it to where it gets marked out? Or does it not get counted as a reception or, at all? That's something I don't know. Because that would be a, that would have been an eight-yard right, completion if they go by where the ball spotted at now instead of a 42-yard. I'm going to have to look that up. Morin in the shotgun, running back to his left, man in motion. Hand off to Galong. Galong 
fights up the middle. And he's going to bring it across the 35 to about the 34. And that's going to be a four-yard carry. He's going to bring up third in a manageable situation right here for Moran and the Hawks. Moran in the shotgun, running backs on each side of him. Two receivers to the left. Moran looking to throw. Screen to Hopgood. Hopgood still on his feet. And going to bring down Moran short for about need it, five, maybe six. Line. Got one yard less than they needed. Going to bring up a fourth and short situation. So going to be a completion. Call it five yards. And this is going to bring up a fourth. going to bring up a fourth down now. And a long one. Two. About one and a half. Warrior in the shotgun. Got five on the play clock. Hand off to Galong. Galong fighting for yardage. It looks like he might have got it. it. Looks like he might have fell forward for three yards. Could be a first down. Hey, yes, and it's a Hawks first down. Keeping the drive alive by driving his legs. Zach Galong. Just a tough guy to bring down, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's hard nosed football right there in the between the tackles for Galong there. Fighting to get those yards. Yeah, because he was stopped for a loss. And with uh, six minutes left in the third quarter, heat timeout. And we'll be right back after these messages. I'd like to recognize the Hancock Hawk Athletic Foundation. Abby Turnage, lead mammography technologist, Highland Community Hospital. Mammograms are important because they help us do early detection. A mammogram is never going to keep you from getting breast cancer, but early detection is what is going to make you have your best possible outcome. We want you to get your mammogram as early as possible, and you should have those yearly beginning at age 40. Highland Community Hospital, here when you need us most. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here at Brett Secretary Barfield in Kill, Mississippi, where your Hawks lead 35-0 to zero with Jamie five minutes Cisco. and 54 seconds left in the third quarter. And it's going to be first and 10 for the Hawks. All right, here we go. First and so ten. in the shotgun, running back to his right, receiver to the left, receiver to the right. Morian gets a snap, fakes the handoff, has Johnson over the top, and draped all over him. Might get a no. Had a guy draped all over him, and instead it goes incomplete. Incomplete is the call. Braxton Johnson, the intended receiver. So gonna bring up second and ten. Second down, 10. Morin in the shotgun, running back to his left, two receivers to the left. Morin looking to throw. Has Acker on the post, but decides to throw the wheel to Schaefer. And what a catch by Caleb Schaefer. Oh, my goodness. 29-yard touchdown from Morin to Caleb Schaefer. What a throw that was right there from Dylan Moore. And oh he, just, he just kind of dropped it in the bucket, led Schaefer, and he went and got it in the end zone for the touchdown. It looked like it was overthrown for a second, but Schaefer with that 4-3 speed went and got it. We're going to watch it right here on the YouTube, Dre. Right? Because there's a bad uh, – we had a pretty bad angle on it, but there it is. It's the out and up. Moran holding. And Schaefer stretched his arms out there and caught it. Perfect throw from Moran. To Caleb Schaefer. And Powell's oh, extra point is up and good. So now your Hawks lead 42 to 42 to nothing with 420 in the third quarter. This has just got to be uh, demoralizing to the St. Martin Yellow Jackets, who has a, a four-star recruit, and he hasn't even been on the field the whole game, but just a couple drives. And they're uh, down 42 to zero here on the road versus the Hawks. I mean, I just can't believe that throw, Dre. That's uh, that's Dylan Moran being who he is, you know, and then Schaefer 
being the great athlete he is going up and getting it with his outstretched hands. Absolutely. So now uh, Powell, who's now made his last two extra point attempts, has the ball on the tee, looking to drive it deep. Powell puts a foot into it. Going to be caught at the 10. And tackled at the 20 at the 10 nice yard return by Karen Ramsey. Ramsey. We got to come up with something with Ramsey, like uh, yeah, 29 on the side. saying after his tackles. Uh, Ramsey Drews. <laughs> a cut above the rest. Diamond in the rough. <laughs> Kid exploded out of nowhere, and uh. Just making that the most of all his uh, moments on the field. So here come the Yellow Jackets. All right, here we go. First and ten, St. Martin at their 20 yard. And back on the field for quarterback. At quarterback for the Yellow Jackets is Logan Jeffries, the junior uh, signal caller. Wells to his right, two receivers to the right, two to the left. Jeffries hands it off to Wells. Wells tries to bounce it outside. And he does. He gets to the Double edge and picks up about 13 for a Yellow Jackets first Dawkins. down. Brought down by Ramsey. That's the Hawks' uh, one weakness if there is one on defense is they, they give up some big plays on the outside edge. Saint Martin with a new yeah, you know, down. it seems uh, everything St. Martin's trying to do inside, they've pretty much – Stopped it, but the outside Here's run seemed Deanna to give the Hawks defense just a little bit of trouble here tonight. Well, even last week, uh, it, was, it was the only time they found success was on the outside. Just got to work on those angles, that's all. He's spreading out those DBs, and they're getting shadow blocked, and they just got to fight off those blocks and keep those guys inside. Uh, quarterback looking to throw and broken up by nice Christoph Gagne. Over on the far side by Hancock. Mr. Lockdown himself, Ball call him the Locksmith. And it looked like Tyran Ramsey almost came away with the interception, too, after, after Gagne break, broke it up. Absolutely. So give him the PBU on there. Jeffries in the shotgun, second and ten. Hand off to Wells up the middle. Big hole. And Wells... Well, just runs completely over Ramsey, and it's going to be tackled by Julian Santee after a good gain right there into Hawk territory. Actually, the 47-yard line where he'll be spotted first and 10 for St. Martin. So that was a, a good 20-yard run, I'd say, probably by... Uh, by Wells. Jeffries in the shotgun. Wells to his left. Hand off. No, fakes it. Throws a little bubble screen to the left. And going to be tackled right away Good by pass. Casey Wheat. Might have been even a, a loss of a yard on the play. Little RPO action right there to fake the handoff to Wells that time and try to get it out quick to uh, Jackson Walker. And Casey Wheat was Johnny on the spot. And with and that sound, that's the, sound, that's the end of the, the third, third quarter. quarter. Your Hawks lead 42 to nothing. And as they front. switch uh, sides of the field, we're going to be right back after these messages. First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune would like to say a huge thank you to their loyal customers. First Place Express Car Wash is happy to serve its local community with two locations, Highway 11 North just past Coast Electric and Highway 43 South just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4. First Place Express Car Wash is locally owned and operated. You know they'll treat you right. Remember, when it comes to your vehicle shine, First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune will have you saying, if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. Now hiring at the Highway 43 location. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here at Brett Favre Field in Kill, Mississippi, where your Hawks enter the fourth quarter leading 42-0. to zero. Could it be, Dre? Could it be another 50-burger, but with a shutout? It'd be the it'd be in back-to-back weeks of the 50-burger and the first shutout of the year for the Hawks if they can hold it on in these last 12 minutes here. 
So they got 12 minutes and, uh, again, playing Ben, but don't break defense. They're giving up a, a couple plays here and there, but then they, they seem to tighten it up and, and, and hold the Yellow Jackets out of the end zone. And the Yellow Jackets are, are in uh, touchdown-only mode. Uh, no field goal to do. So Logan Jeffries at the helm for the Yellow Jackets. To his left is Stephen Ramsey. Three receivers to the right. Ramsey shifts from the left side to the right side. One receiver to the left. Takes the handoff, throws it. It's going to be complete for about 13 yards. And that's going to be my player Bray. Casey Weed on the coverage and the tackle. Casey Weed on the stop. St. Martin gets first down yard. And so, again, Mar St. Martin with another uh, yellow jacket first Ball down. <laughs> Jeffries in the shotgun. Wells to his right. Three receivers to the right. One receiver to the left. Gets the snap. Takes the handoff. Looks the throw and is caught. And going to be tackled by Trey Robinson. Jackson Knight was in the backfield. Jackson Knight wreaking havoc. Almost had the sack, so the quarterback had to dump it real quick. And it's going to be a two-yard uh, completion. But like I said, talk about Trey Robinson right away. Logan Jeffries in the shotgun. Wells to his left. A receiver to the right. Three receivers to the left. Wells scoots up a little bit. Takes the handoff, quick slant, and you're going to be caught and tackled no, by Casey Lee. By six, and that's Montclair Brave again. So, Hawks defense letting Ball's him get the fine. inside leverage on the on the fake handoff quick slant. Look for uh, one of the linebacks possibly to probably drop and uh, drop into that zone if they keep continuing to try to throw this quick slant, Dre. Yeah, you'd have to make an adjustment of some sort there. If they keep doing that. Especially if you want to keep uh, the donut on the scoreboard. But right now, it looks like St. Martin saying, hey, we're trying to get in this end zone. So Jeffrey's in the shotgun. Three receivers to the left. Running back to the left. That's brave. In motion. Left to right. Jeffrey's looking to throw and has the slant on the right side this time complete. And that's going to be Keith Washington for the Yellow Jackets. And another Yellow Jacket first down. And another first down. Makes you wonder if the Hawks defense is uh, just getting a little bit tired or whatnot, Dre. Um, Maybe getting tired or just getting, you know, a little too relaxed with this big lead that they have. So Jeffrey's in the shotgun. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. That's Wells to his right. And off to Wells and going to be stopped right well, away. And that's going to be Bryce Ladner. Aiden Taylor. <laughs> Aiden Taylor is 22 and 72. Seems like when they're making tackles, they're making tackles together. And normally for a loss in the backfield. Yeah, it was definitely a, a TFL right there. Loss on the play brings up the second and the 11. So going to bring up second and 11 for the Yellow Jackets. See if they uh, try the, the play action quick slant pass again because it's there for them. They're going to throw. He throws the quick out route, and going to be completed for maybe a yard, and then a, a flag comes out. Might be a late hit or something by Trey Robinson. Good ball, personal foul against Hancock. And that's going to give him an automatic first down, and Make it even that much closer for the Yellow Jackets to be able to get into the end zone. So first and it's probably gonna be a first and goal situation, maybe. Yes, first and goal for sure. At around the eight, seven or eight yard line. What you got, Dre? Seven, eight? What? And we'll make it first and goal. Ball resting right at the eight, eight, like eight, eight yard line. Eight yard line. Yep. Okay, first and goal for St. Martin. So quarterback in the shotgun, Wells to his right, three receivers to the left, one to the right. Jeffries gets the snap, hands it off to Wells. Wells gets upfield and Wells, Wells gets into the end zone for the Yellow Jackets. A nice hard run right there by Ty Tykevian Wells of the Yellow Jackets. 
to put them on the board here in the middle of the fourth quarter. Where your Hawks lead 42 to 6. And pinning the extra point. We'll be right back after these messages from Sonic. Sonic Drive-In's menu is heating up with the all-new Buffalo Chicken Dip Bites. It features a crispy fried pocket filled with cheddar cheese blended together and then stuffed and fried to perfection in a crispy golden wrapper. Stop by and try them for yourself at good. Sonic Drive-In on Highway 11, just north of Highway 43 North. Go ahead, push that red button for happy eating at its best. That's what you get at Sonic Drive-In at Piggyune. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here at Brett Favre Field in Kill, Mississippi. Week three of uh, high school football action. And your Hawks lead 42-7 to with six minutes and 25 seconds and counting on the clock. Hawks, uh, I don't see them uh, letting their foot off the gas, whether they're 42-7 to or not. I, I think Dylan Moran and the Hawks offense uh, goal is to score every time they get the ball. Yeah, I think, you know, I think that's probably Dylan's mindset is every time that I have the ball in my hands, I got to put six on the board no matter what. See what the Yellow Jackets try to do here. Uh, down by 35. And they kick it right out of a, at a Hancock player, and it hits him and it goes right out of, bounds. out of bounds. Out of bounds after hitting a Hancock player. It, hit, uh, looked like it, looked, it hit House in the back and then shot out of bounds. Yeah, that hit House. House turns. You know, he's on that front line, and when the ball gets kicked, he turns to go. Instead of uh, the, the wedge or whatnot, ball will be the ball actually hit him in the back. Luckily, it didn't go back towards the Yellow Jacket side of the field, and it shot out of bounds. And Hancock with great field position at about the 38-yard line. It looks like there's a, some sort of timeout, so with that, we're going to try to get another commercial in from Dre's College. Hi Wildcats, I'm Carrie E. And I'm Mackenzie. Are you ready to roar with the best here at Pearl River? We're inviting you to join our growing Wildcat family. Pearl River continues to make headlines as the fastest growing community college in the state. All while putting our students first by not increasing tuition and developing more opportunities for successful careers. Come be a part of history by joining our Wildcat family where we show out our main character energy. Just visit prcc.edu and roar, roar with, with the, the best. best. Like to thank Scotty Adams. All right, welcome oh, back, Hawk fans. Right. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live here in Kill, Mississippi at Brett Favre Field. And we got a quarterback change. In comes the sophomore quarterback, Tyson Kanan, who saw some action last week at Moss Point with a big league. So Kanan gets the shot down snap, looking to throw, pulls it down, and they bring pressure. Kanan. And Tyson is going to be sacked on his first play. He had a tie Dito open, but just couldn't get it to him. So about a loss of about three, three, and we're going to bring up second and 13 for uh, Kyson Kanan and the Hawks. Kyson, uh, quite the athlete, uh, they brought the pressure on him right there, so, and they might have got five back, no, I guess they said the Yellow Jackets got back in time. Kanan in the shotgun, two receivers to the right. Gets a snap, hands it off to Vincent around the left side. Vincent tries to gain the edge, and he's going to be bottled up for a one-yard loss. So, Hawks they offense hard, stuttering. Coming up third and very long for the Hawks. Clock running, four minutes and 21 seconds left on the clock. Looks like that's Jay Sean Payne in the backfield with Kyson Kanan. Kanan looking to throw, rolling right. Has a man. And had Ty Dito, but just underthrew him just a little yeah, bit. Short armed him. And his first and pass goes incomplete. Intended for Ty Dito. And Hancock bringing on the punting unit, which consists of Ty Dito. Yeah. 
to Dito uh, with his heels back on the 19. Oh, at the 20, actually. Ready to punt. Dito puts a good foot into it. Nice punt. Going to be caught at the 25. And... Dito on a nice That's Preston Biggs making a man miss and then bringing it to about the 34 maybe. There's a flag on the ground. The flag comes in late. Don't know what that's about. No, they're waving off it the off. So that was about an 11-yard return the, by uh, Preston Biggs for the Yellow Jackets. Clock ticking down. 57 into the game for Hancock. Dylan Rose. So uh, Yellow Martin, uh, Yellow Martin. <laughs> St. Martin Yellow Jackets break the, the huddle from the sideline. And uh, out comes Logan Jeffries and uh, Tykevian Wells. Jeffries looking to throw the slant again and miss fires. Pass across the middle, falls incomplete. Going to be a second and ten situation here for the Yellow Jackets and uh, Logan Jeffries. Again, I don't know what happened with uh, Norea White, who was uh, supposed to be the all-world athlete on the coast going to Ole Miss. Uh, haven't heard from him since the last, the first couple of drives of the game. Haven't seen him on the field, Andre. So, hope that means uh, that young man's all right. Here goes the handoff to Wells, and Wells gains the outside, and he's just running. Back. He's a hard runner. He's a big boy. He's almost like the high school version of uh, Jerome Bettis. He yeah, from up here, he and, you know, he looks like a pretty strong, uh, big runner. It's like the St. Martin has your own version of Zach Galong. Yeah, uh, he's a little bit bigger than Zach, and he, he does have the same number, though, five. So Wells to the right of Jeffries, three receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. Jeffries looking to throw, goes deep, and on the pass coverage is Dante Taylor. Uh, Looked like the quarterback the and the receiver uh, were mixed up on the play call right there. The receiver going long and quarterback throwing almost like a back shoulder fade. And Dante Taylor, if he would have turned around just a hair sooner, probably would have had an interception. So Jeffries in the shotgun. Wells to his left. Three receivers to the left. Jeffries looking to throw. Same play. Stop. And going to be caught and tackled Passes by Dante gone. Taylor. By number two, Dante Taylor. And mind play a brave on the reception and run after the catch. Looked like Brave got up jawing at Dante, and Dante just pointed at the scoreboard. Good response. I mean, yeah. don't, don't jaw back. Don't. Yep, 42 to 7. Just point at the scoreboard. And you got eight seconds left on the clock. That's right, Dre. When you got like a, such a such a big lead, uh, don't the clock just constantly run? It doesn't stop. Yeah, right? I think that's why the that's, game's been going by a little fast. I think it's maybe after forty points, or because I'm like this. I look up and it's like eight seconds left. <laughs> so the Hawks are definitely going to three zero on the on the on the season. And uh. We'll be, be traveling. We'll be going to Pebble next week, Dre. Another hour plus drive. And, um, 7 o'clock kickoff. We're going to have to leave about 5 o'clock, 5.15 at the latest. Try to leave as early as possible. I'm trying to leave as soon as we go, I get off work, so be ready, buddy. You're going to be in Poplarville. I think that will be on the way. I'm going to have to pick you up at uh, Pearl River. But, uh. Jeffries looking to get in the end zone one last time. And in and out of the hands of the receiver. Could have been intercepted right there, but it wasn't. And 
the one second left. Actually, on the clock. one second left on the clock. So it looks like the Yellow Jackets will have one last shot to uh, put another seven on the board here. Ball resting at the 30 yard line. Timeout on the field. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, they called a timeout, so I guess we'll take one, too. Get one last commercial in from First Southern Bank. First Southern Bank. Simple, easy, and user friendly. Come experience community banking featuring online services, 24-hour ATMs, and seven locations in Picayune, Richton, Columbia, Oak Grove, and Petal, and our 24-hour ATM in Courier. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. And with one second left, the Hawks. Up 42 to 7. I don't know why the Yellow Jackets don't just kneel the ball right here. Uh, but Hawks playing back deep. Somebody somebody on that Hawks secondary wants an interception. And it's going to be thrown short under the middle, underneath. And Pass is caught by number six. Run out of bounds. And Mike Claire Bray is going to make the catch and get thrown out of bounds by, out of bounds by Dante Taylor. So give Taylor another tackle on the night. And your Hawks. Go up. Uh, I mean, uh, go to three and zero on the season. And again, like I said, we travel to Pedal next week. Should be a really good game. Hancock versus Pedal. Always has been. Always um, been a tough game for the Hawks. Uh, we actually beat Pedal for the first time in program history. My senior year, uh, both teams were ranked. Uh, we were ranked like uh, 13 in the state, state, and they were ranked 11. We had to go up there and play them, and we beat them 16-6 to 6 on their field for the first time Hancock ever beat Pedal. So hopefully uh, we go up there this next week and go to 4-0 and, and, and show this electric offense off to the Pedal Panthers. Yeah, that would be a – you couldn't ask for a better start if they were to do that. So uh, just real quick, if I can add this up real quick before we go off the air. Uh, Morin was 8 of 11 in the first half and wound up being – Three for five in the second half. So that brings him 11 for 16. And he added an additional, uh, what, 29 plus 13, 42 yards. So 167 and three touchdowns. So very efficient night. Uh, not many yards there. Uh, he's been averaging over 200 yards a game. Uh but very uh, efficient, 11 of 16, only five incompletions, 167 yards, three touchdowns. And Galong, who had 136 yards at the half, only added uh, seven more yards in the second half. Uh, uh, again, great uh, balanced uh, attack by the Hawks. And the bend but break, don't break defense held up. And your Hancock Hawks are now 3-0 on the season and looking to go to 4-0 next week at Pedal. I'm Aaron Underwood. I'm Andre Underwood. For WRJW, Hawk Pride.